Welcome to the GCN Show. This week, the real story as to why I finally got beaten in five versus one. In other words, size top five cycling excuses. Well, you're a bit tired, Si. A bit under the weather. You will find out very surely. <laughs> uh, thankfully, after this show, we'll all have heard the end of it once and for all and we can move on. Well, yeah, that's what you think. Hmm. I hope so, anyway. Uh, we've also got an inspirational man who lost half his body weight through cycling, a homemade aero bike, which is not quite as bad as you'd expect, and a giant game of bike tag. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that even if you can't get further than 10 k's from your apartment, you can still ride a lap of France. Yeah, cracking effort there, tracing a lap of l'Hexagon in downtown Paris. We also learned that bike and component delays could be getting even worse. A pink bike reported that the giant ship stuck in the Suez Canal has containers of bikes on it, uh, not to mention all the other ships stuck in the traffic jam behind it now. That's, uh, yeah, thank you for you, Dan. Belgian beer is still brewed in Belgium, so no need to stress too much, but um, it is a mess. It is. Isn't it a real mess? COVID-related shortages, and now this, our collection of 11-speed Campagnolo cassettes are going to be worth more than <laughs> gold on eBay soon, Dan. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, this yeah. is very true. Yeah. Uh, and finally this week, we learnt that whilst two, three, or even four roadies can't beat Sa on a TT bike, five of them can. Yes, but only when the fifth rider is an actual <laughs> pro, okay? Let's, let's be clear. Well, we had to do something, didn't we? I mean, it was getting unbearable here was in it? the office, I've got to say. Well, I do wonder if you'd have been beaten anyway, even if it wasn't a pro rider as the fifth person. Why? Well, because of your dramatically increased CDA, courtesy of your ever-increasing head size over the last few weeks. Honestly, it's been unbearable. Uh, anyway, here's your platform. It's now time to get your excuses in. Brilliant. All right, how long have we got? 60 seconds. Okay. <laughs> right, here goes. Uh, firstly, I took a wrong turn. Was it not the same course as it's always been? Well, yes, it was, but still, I took a wrong turn. Um, anyway, at the kind of speeds that I was going, I mean, it's quite hard to just turn at all. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, mm. I lost six seconds there. So that's not the whole excuse, then, is it? No. Uh, what about the other 31 <laughs> seconds that you lost then? Well, okay, in all seriousness, I actually kept the gap down to just five seconds on the first section into a headwind for the first 4K. And then it sort of unraveled from there mm. on the drag back to the line where I lost my aero advantage due to the tailwind. Right. Um, plus, I was knackered, quite frankly. Uh, we'd all it. done the 90 mile ride the day before, uh, but Hank and Connor were able to hide behind Alex and, let's be clear, mainly Rory, the pro. Whereas I just had to put up with my screaming, burning legs that mm. were just, you know, hang, holding me back. And? I think you've got another 10 seconds or so left. Uh, Rory was doing 650 watt turns. Uh, okay. You don't have any more excuses now, do you? I don't think. <laughs> you were beaten fair and square. Well, I'm not sure. One. I'm not sure fair and square. I mean, it, it was literally five against one. <laughs> I was just ganged up on. Basically. I guess that's fair enough, yeah. Five versus one isn't very fair in many cases, is it? No. Uh, it does pay me to say it, actually, Si, but you have done remarkably well in that series. I've actually been quite impressed with your performances and determination, I've got to say. Um, well, I'm still very pleased that it's finally over. We've heard the last of it, thankfully. Thanks, mate. Thanks. No, I appreciate that. Um, it did get us thinking, though. How many pro riders on road bikes would it take to be another pro like Philippe Ogana or Wout van Aert on a TT bike? So good riders against good riders rather than the mishmash affair that we've been putting up with for the last six months. Precisely. Uh, so anyway, we thought we'd look into some data to see if we might get an indication of the answer to the question that Sai has just posed. So, if we look at Tirreno Adriatico as an example for the last couple of years, because that race finishes with a 10k flat individual time trial on time trial bikes, uh, Wout van Aert won it this year, just a couple of weeks ago in fact. Average speed for him, 54.6 k's per hour. Ghana won last year at a whopping 56.6 k's per hour average. Oh, now, team time trials on road bikes are relatively rare in the pro ranks. However, I remember that there was one back in the Tour of Qatar, and looking back in 2010, Team Sky won that one. Their average speed was just under 51k an hour yeah. for 8k. Although the year before, Si, when I did it, it was significantly faster. Significantly shorter as well then. Well, yeah, true. Only six kilometres. The mighty Cervelo test team averaged 54 kilometres per hour. <laughs> to win? 
to come seventh. Hey. <laughs> Team Garmin Slipstream actually won that race at 54.8 kilometers per hour is their average, so slightly faster than Van Aert in Tirreno this year. Uh, that was with an eight-man team though, Si. So I think the conclusion is you've been beaten too soon. Well, hold on. Wait a second. Technology has come a long way since your day. Uh, <laughs> frames, wheels, helmets, clothing, um, smartphones, the whole works. So I think we need to look more recently. Tour of Columbia 2020, 16.7k team time trial. Road bikes, six riders per team. EF averaged 55.6. So not far off Ghana no. speeds and for longer. But still, one more rider there than the team that beat you last week. And they were at altitude too, where the air is thin and so naturally you go faster. What was your average speed actually on the TT bike? 44.9. 44.9. 40, yeah. You are no Filippo Ghana, are you? Except for your ankles. <laughs> no, he's a man mountain, but his ankles would shake in their literal boots if they saw mine. <laughs> um, and actually, no, this was no pan flat motorway, of course. This was very technical, it's narrow. So I standard. think in conclusion, Si, it would probably take about 10 good pro riders to beat the world's best time trialist on a flat 10K course. Uh, basically, it's really bloody hard, isn't it, to go 56 kilometers per hour on a road bike, even for a short effort on the front of the group that you're in. Time trial bikes, and indeed the position you can adopt on them, are significantly more aero, almost surprisingly so, even given all the knowledge we've got about that subject. That's right, yeah. The other conclusion from this, mate, is that even a thousand Ollie Bridgewoods would not beat Filippo Gannon. <laughs> well, there's a question for you. If you had a thousand Ollie Bridgewoods doing a team time trial, who would get dropped? I think that's Dan's final thought mm. for the day, right there. Uh, also, perhaps pop your answers in the comment section down below. Next up, your weekly GCN inspiration, and we have got some corkers for you this week. Notes to previous winners, yours were good too, but these are especially good. <laughs> it does right. seem like that this week. It's it does, isn't it? It's a strong week, doesn't it? Uh, well, you'll see uh, when you see third place. This is the photo sent in by Cycle DD or Cycled D. Uh, last day of a four day solo bike trip to Lofoten, Norway, last summer. Of course, I looked that up before we started. Uh, it was an amazing experience and loved every minute of it. Had a couple of handlebar ones last week, didn't we? But we Norway's light is something else, isn't it? That is fantastic, isn't it? Again, it's another road bike looking tentatively like they might try and ride through lumpy, Marshes. dusty grass. Yeah, but, um, but no, I mean, yeah, that just looks fantastic, doesn't it? What a place to yes. go on a bike trip. Well done to you. Plant-based cyclist book will be winging its way to you very shortly. Yeah, all right, second place this week. Uh, winning a core white t-shirt and a maintenance book as well, which is a pretty bumper prize. Uh, it was this one from Alice E.J.H. <laughs> well done, you managed acronym? to read some letters out yep. in the Alice, correct order. <laughs> Alice E.J.H. That's all right. Um, anyway. Longer days are coming, spring evening ride. Is there anything better than an evening ride with the sun setting? Bib shorts and short sleeves too. Felt like these days would never come in the Scottish snow only a month ago. Hold on. Shorts and short sleeves in Scotland in March. I'm not sure I believe that. I was going to say that I mean, that's a beautiful photo, but that definitely looks like it might be still about yeah. minus two. Shorts and short sleeves and a million goosebumps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does look a great photo though, so well done to you. It does, and I can totally, totally like relate to that uh, in terms of summer evenings and stuff. Mm. Oh man, it's so much nicer, isn't it? Now the clocks have gone forward, those lighter evenings, brilliant. Uh, meanwhile, in first place this week, receiving a GCN cool red sweatshirt, a GCN shadow stand, in brackets, original, apparently. Oh, original yeah. shadow stand. Yeah, and a GSIN Word ones. logo t-shirt, Stargazer and silver. Uh, this one from Anders H90. Um, Whoa! Aren't the mountains just great? Descending off the Furka Pass, if this doesn't make you want to get on the bike, I don't know what will. That is incredible, isn't it? That is some view, yeah. That is Do you think some you had view. somebody else take that shot, or is that somebody else on the bike? I think it's like... Like an, the ultimate selfie stick. Oh, that's probably a bit far for a selfie stick. Well, maybe, maybe it's one of those, those, those self-following drones. I reckon it's probably... It's probably um, looking a bit too much into this. It's a great photo. Yeah, the cracking photo. And a worthy winner as well. Um, but, uh, but yeah, yeah there we go. Stuff. Keep them coming in. We absolutely love having a look at your inspirational photos. Of course, to enter, just upload them to the GCN app. Uh, where not only we peruse them, but everyone else on the GCN app 
Exactly, so get involved. Uh, just before we move on, you will notice that Cyanide sports in some fetching new GCN Cobbled Classics t-shirts. Yeah. The great thing about when GCN comes out with some new t-shirts is that it's an opportunity for Cy and I to show our guns off and our arms that haven't seen the sun in about three years. Yeah. Uh, but hopefully you'll like the t-shirts that are covering at least some of us up. They're available now at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. Looks good on you, that one. It's now time for cycling shorts. Cycling shorts now, and we're going to start with this incredible bike that was uploaded to the GCN app. A homemade carbon aero bike lovingly crafted by M. Buttery and his daughter in their basement. Told you, it's nowhere near as bad as you'd think it would be, is it? In fact, it's bonkers. <laughs> Check out that fully integrated drivetrain. It's very cool, isn't it? It is indeed. Uh, next up, sticking with photos of bikes for a moment, here's something that's cool that's cropped up onto our radars. Another story from Vancouver. This time, it's about a giant game of bike tag, which we read about on Vancouver is Awesome. Com. That's the site, is it? Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, now, I had no idea what this was, of course, because we're old, but apparently it originated in Portland, and the premise is very simple. A photo of a bike in a mystery location is uploaded to the Bike Tag website. You then need to go out, find the location, take a photo of your bike in the same spot, and then your bike in another location. Yeah, it sounds complicated, but it's not. You send both of those photos into the website, and if you're the first person to do so, your second photo then becomes the mystery destination that everyone else needs to find. Now, when you look at biketag.org, there are a few games on the go in cities around the world. Vancouver is up to 220 rounds of bike wow. tag. Portland, over 400. Presumably kind of cool. we're a bit behind in the UK, or we need to get our act together. Inverness has two. All oh, right. Yep. <laughs> well, news of a cycling competition now. So the Cobble Classics are in full swing. We had some brilliant racing last week, in fact, didn't we? Rounded out by the women's and men's Gent Wevelgum on Sunday. Yeah, Jumbo Visma had a brilliant day out. Mariana Voss taking her first win of the year, and Wout van Aert taking his 45th? It's only his third, actually. Ah, yeah. pfft, rubbish. Anyway, the men's field was slightly depleted, not to take anything away from Wout van Aert. No Matthew Vanderpool, who's resting up, but also sadly missing with the Bora and Trek Segafredo teams who are having to isolate following a couple of COVID-19 positives within the team. In all honesty, as sad as it is to have teams sidelined from a big race like that, it is quite reassuring, isn't it, that the tests do seem to be working and hopefully it'll give race organisers confidence that their races can continue to be run safely. Indeed. ASO, we're looking at you right now. Fingers are still crossed for Paris Bay. Hmm. I also think it does vindicate Peter Sagan's decision to skip those cobbled classics there and race the Volta Catalonia instead. Well, indeed. Peter who? Sorry? You can't do that joke anymore, actually, because he took a great stage win down in Spain there and is looking ominous now for the coming weekend. Yeah, you'll have to watch the preview show, uh, the Tour of Flanders preview show on GCN Racing to see exactly who will give the GCN prediction kiss of death to. But yes. Tessa Gann might be one of them. Could be, you have to find out. Uh, anyway, here is a cool story that we found on Wigan Today, which is not a paper I read with great regularity, I yeah. have to admit, but it does tell the story of Steve Johnson. Uh, he's a 62-year-old with ambitions to represent his country at the next Masters World Championships. And what is utterly remarkable is that two years ago, Steve weighed 21 stone. Since then, he's lost half his body weight and rediscovered his talent for cycling from when he was a schoolboy with ambitions to race in the Olympics. Yeah, utterly amazing that, isn't it? He says in the interview, my life is great now, it's never been better. I can run and cycle and I can do my shoelaces up. Brilliant stuff. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, he still struggles to find clothes, apparently, that fit his waist, uh, because it's now too small for builders' clothes. They go down to 32 inches, apparently. Ah, amazing. That is inspirational. If you want a bit more inspiration for you right now, sticking with clothes, Castelli are running a Tour of Flanders Strava challenge over the next couple of weeks. So all you've got to do is ride the length of the Ronde, or 264 kilometres of it, between now and the 11th of April. If you complete it, you will then qualify for a 25% discount off Castelli's online shop, and you'll get a chance to win a guided tour of their headquarters, which of course is in Italy. That's a cool prize, that, isn't it? Uh, right, now finally, let's quickly check in on what films are being released on GCM Plus this week. Firstly, we've got Superbike building the ultimate climbing bike, which is kind of like an homage to everything lightweight and some GCN Dust Science in there as well. And then a bit later this week, on Friday, it is the latest of our Legend series. So you've seen Schleck, Taffy, Museo, and Fabian Cancellara. The next one 
is the German sprint god Marcel Kittel. Uh, Bernie visited him in Germany last year and found out more about his career and more about that decision to end his career much earlier than we were expecting. Here's a quick look at what you can expect. This is the basement, my uh, bike chamber, and uh, this is the Tour de France bike from 2014. I'm going to talk to him about some of his highs. Yellow jersey <laughs> from 2013, which was yeah crazy. I get the inside story of how he felt at the pinnacle of his stardom. I was completely on fire. I just tried to push as hard as I could. As a sprinter, you always live for this finish line, but you have to remember, okay, this is really special. And why at the top of his game did Marcel quit the sport he loved? I was at the point where I felt horrible. The difficult moments really teach you who you are and, and I learned who I am. During his career, he was known for his explosive power. I get back out on the road with him to see if he still packs a punch. Three, two, one, go! Come on, Bernie! To get unique access and get under the skin of this world-class Grand Tour rider. I always loved riding my bike, but the reasons why I sit on my bike now are different. The real Marcel Kittel, the king of sprints. Next up, hack forward slash bodge of the week. Starting with this one from Nora JP. Bodge. Who needs a garden hose in winter? The winter biker. Uh, this looks to be some kind of chain tensioner on a mountain bike uh, made out of garden hose, zip ties. Bodge. And some other plastic. Uh, tell us what you really think, sir. Well, I mean, I'll be honest with you, Dan. I can't really understand what's going on there. I mean, it's been a while since I've needed a chain tensioner like that, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I just don't understand. Unless the inside of that garden hose is filled with filled with some kind of like brushes that cleans your chain as you go. But even sure. then, I'm doubtful. You tension the chain yourself, side of your power, don't you? Absolutely. <laughs> um, and actually, the winter is when you need your garden hose because you need to bloom. Depends where they are. Might be frozen all winter. In Canada, garden hoses don't work. That's well, where they have winter. proper winters, yes. Uh, anyway, 80% of you went with Bodge, and that is what Sai and I are going with as well. Yeah, all right, next up we've got this one from Joel3. Roadside self-serve, how cool is this? About a mile from my house is this little bike shop for bikes in need of repairs. It warms my heart to know that someone with such good taste cares about a bike in need. A bit like the, um, the phone box that we talked about last yes, week. Yes, exactly, so. yeah. Um, this is great, isn't it? It is super cool. Oh man. Do you think, I, do you think I, they've screwed the pump down or are locals so trustworthy they don't need to? Well, I don't know. I like to think that you wouldn't need to screw the pump down. But the reality is you probably would need to screw the pump down, wouldn't mm. you, unless you live in a particularly nice trusting area. Um, <laughs> are you considering putting a pump and a service station outside the front of your house, though? I would love to live in an area where that was, that was needed. I mean, I, I think rather than go to my bike, my bike shop, my, my house, you just go to a bike shop mm. it's just down the road. Fair enough. In fact, one of the 12 bike shops just down the road. But, um, but well, I, I like it. That's a definite hack, isn't it? Uh, oh, 100%. Strangely, 4% of people voted bodge for that one. Had a they're, long they're the hard ones that themselves. discovered that the pump was screwed down and they couldn't nick it. <laughs> uh, right uh, then. Moving on, this came in from Bella T. Wow. Uh, nice. Since signed down, really like 3D printed stuff. I thought I was going to say hack already. Uh, I printed a, uh, one of a G-SYN valve cap. Ah. Sorry for the copying the G-SYN logo. I did it just for the hack and bodge. I won't sell or share the design of anyone. <laughs> well, you probably wouldn't sell them anyway, to be a fair. A 3D printed valve cap. Now, I'm not normally a valve cap kind of person, Dan, but as Bella T said, anything 3D printed automatically uh, gets a thumbs up in my book. Yeah. So, uh, amazing. I think that looks great, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, it's fantastic. Well, I'm saying hack. I'm, I'm not sure if I'd put it on my own bike, to be honest. Well, it's because it's a valve cap, isn't it? Yeah, well, partly. It's also, you know, surely that's going to slow you down. Yeah, turbulence from that would be uh, astronomical. So, um, so, yeah, no, I like that very much. Uh, well, 72% well well of people went with hack for that particular one. Who bodged that one? I don't understand. <laughs> Rival, um, rival channels. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Right, okay, uh, EC Miller next. This is cool, right? New gravel shoes. I couldn't find any size 49 gravel or mountain bike shoes. 
And that is quite large, isn't it? Yeah, mine are quite big. I'm 46. Whoa. Uh, so I decided to make my own from an old pair of Lance Armstrong era road shoes picked up on discount. Road shoes obviously had no traction off the bike. I took the tread from an old pair of trainers, glued them onto the road shoes, not 3D printed, but maybe I'll give that a try next time. You don't need to 3D print it if you've got grips glued on like that. It's amazing. It's done a decent job. Fantastic, yeah. Could be a she, I guess, but probably not with size 49 feet. But no. uh, you never know. But no, hack from me. Did I uh, have I ever told you about my uh, my hacking of road shoes to make them mountain bike shoes? No. I'm pretty sure I've told this story sometime. Basically, same thing, Lance Armstrong era Nike road shoes. Yeah. Um they used to come with mountain bike fittings in the yeah. middle. And for some reason I decided that these were better than the mountain bike shoes available at the time. So uh, I just used to glue little bits of um, a tire tread onto the bottom. Did you? So, yeah. so a bit yeah. like this. Send them on into the app side and I'll um, get them a bodge. They are mate. <laughs> Nike Poggio 2s. Remember? Well, people were entirely, I do yeah. remember those, yeah. Oh, you I do? do? remember those, yeah. yeah. People were entirely on the fence on this one. 50-50 hack Whoa. versus bodge. I mean, what's a man to do if they can't get size 49 gravel or mountain bike shoes? But anyway, let's move on. Yeah. Uh, Mick. Gilbert one. <laughs> what? what was that? Well, how would you say it? <laughs> I don't know, but <laughs> not like that. <laughs> Go on then. <laughs> anyway, 3D printed <laughs> chain holder. Great accessory to use when you take your wheels off and wash your bike. It's a hack. It's a hack. <laughs> oh, sorry. She's still laughing at that. <laughs> yeah, goodness me. Well, Mick Gilbert. Mick Gilbert. <laughs> Mick Gilbert, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Right, anyway, no, That's it's good. not a hack. A 3D it print is. Well, oh God. Look at the results. 82% of people were saying hack. 3D printed, that should immediately be a hack from you, chain keeper. Well, yeah, I mean, now I'm on, now I don't know what to do. It's like, it's like you're trolling me. 3D printed, hack, chain keeper, massive bodge. <laughs> What's the man to do? Um, well, the people have spoken, so si. It's uh, an overwhelming majority who have voted for hack, I'm afraid. What a waste of a 3D printer. Chain keeper. Well, let's move on, shall we? It's a Derny Rider. I can do that one very yeah, well. Yeah, that sounded good. Uh, custom Oakley's Part 3. Painted three pairs to match some custom no pins kit. All done with spray cans. Of nice. Eyes. Very cool. Hack from me. They do. I mean, they look properly vintage and retro, don't they? I do like them, yeah. Hack from me as well. 72% going with hack for that. Very cool. And we're going to round out uh, Hacker Boys this week with this one from Stuart Dunn, 556. Oh, my word. This is brutal. Somehow he's managed to trash a pair of Zip 404s, but so that they don't go completely to waste, they've been fashioned into some nifty coat hangers. Which uh, I've which got it, some. I've got some Reynolds coat hangers that they uh, they supplied us many years ago at home. Oh yeah, made out of one of their carbon wheels. Yeah. Oh yeah, God knows what you what you did to break one of those, but there we go. Yeah. I mean that's good recycling. It's a hack from me. Yeah, it's a hack from me as well, and it's a hack from 86% of you. Uh, don't forget there are plenty more hacks and bodges to vote on over on the GCN app to get voting now, and they might be featured in next week's show. It's time now for caption competition, that part of the show where you get a chance to win a coveted GCN Elite water bottle. All you've got to do is put a witty caption in the comment section down below to a photo that we're about to show you. But as always, we will start with the results from the last one. We will. Not sure when you took over handling of the water bottle for this segment, but it happened a few weeks ago and I've not complained yet. It's because uh, it's because it's now a long way back to the shelves. Yeah, you know. and I can't be bothered to get up. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> right, last week's photo was this one and our winning caption came in from Lotta Gale. Alpacin white shorts, that'll leave an awful yellow stain. <laughs> Genius. It. That is Genius. Very that deserves good. far more than 11 likes, I thought, underneath last week's show. So well done to you, Lotta. Uh, get in touch with us on Facebook with your address. We'll send a bottle out to you. This week's photo comes from the Volta Catalonia. Clean sweep of the podium positions for Team Ineos Grenadiers. It was impressive, that one. It was, wasn't it? Although there was no Primoz Roglic and no Taddy Pogaccia. No. Not to take anything away from their performance. Uh, I'll get you started. Go on then. These World Tour podium presentations aren't what they used to be, are they, lads? <laughs> I like that, mate. Mm. I also like the fact that, yeah, the Volta Catalunya looks like it's some kind of local fourth cat crit. <laughs> this is exactly what you'd see when you sort of grew up racing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah just getting ready for the Merseyside two-day, was it, you won the prologue? Well, that wasn't, that wasn't low-key. That, <laughs> yeah. that was that extremely was very prestigious, that one. Um, <laughs> and also, at that time of year, it was far too cold to sit on the pavement. 
outside yeah, the sports centre. Or, or have any skin on the show. No, indeed. Uh, yeah. There we go. I like that. If you think you can better Dan's, and frankly, even if you can't, stick your caption in the comments section and uh, we will pick a winner next week who will get... We've got some corking videos coming up for you on the channel this week, but just before we let you know what they are, a few of our favourite comments from last week, starting, in fact, with the GCN show. Uh, John H wrote in and said, For those wondering, Due to COVID restrictions, barber shops are still closed in the UK, which explains size awful DIY barnet. <laughs> DIY? Uh, uh, My wife did this. Oh, you, be you better take that back. Have you told her about this comment? To be fair, she keeps she keeps commenting about how bloody good the haircut is. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, seriously, this is better than it normally looks. So um, so yeah, I've got no excuse when the when the hairdressers reopen in yeah. a couple of weeks. Um, well, there you go. But that did make me chuckle, that comment, John. Thank you yeah, very much. Did, did uh, me meanwhile, Kay Harm, uh, on a more serious note, puts almost 67 years old now. I understand training sometimes seems pointless, but realise that you are training today for what you will be able to do in 10 years' time. Do it to, to attain your goals this year. Be realistic and accept the joy of being fitter and a better rider as a solid side benefit. Yeah, that's what I'm doing, press-ups now. <laughs> for, for, for the man you'll be in 10 years' time. Absolutely. I want to be a man who can do at least one when he's uh, <laughs> 47. But uh, anyway, there we go. Uh, right, five versus one. Unsurprisingly, there were a fair few comments. Um, 1,500 at yes, last count. Indeed. Uh, so, uh, so we've gone through and, and picked out a few. Um, finally, one that works said, uh, I haven't been this excited for a sequel since the third Lord of the Rings, which is uh, very flattering. Um, Cyclist Demeter said, uh, kudos to Ollie for showing up. He really doesn't take himself too seriously. Team player, I admire that attitude. Respect Ollie, and yeah, you know what? That's I agree. Very I agree. true. Yeah, hundred percent. Ollie was a uh, was an absolute legend. So, uh, so yeah, and actually, to be fair, like he did blooming well because because um, they were shifting. Hank was crying out for um, for Rory to slow down <laughs> for much of it. Annoyingly, that didn't make the edit. But there we go. Uh, it's there somewhere. Um, but then Jonathan Mallet commented on on probably the best bit of the video. Manon's disappointed head shake and shutting the window on Ollie made this video. And it, it actually does. Should we yeah. have a look? Let's have a look at it again. Manon, you got a bottle. Stay, you got What? What? Ah. <laughs> that was a brilliant part of the video, it I've got it. to say. We played it during the halftime show of the Ghent Webblegum air races. Oh really? Last weekend, yeah. Living up an otherwise fairly dull day. Did it? <laughs> kind of. That bit did anyway. <laughs> Uh, anyway, underneath In Pursuit, the first epic of the year, uh, Lewis Mitchell wrote, this is probably one of the best videos you've made. Everyone was on a roll. You could see how much they missed each other. Absolutely great video. I'd love to see much more as simple and well-directed as this. Wow. Well, thank you very much. It's always lovely to read those sorts of comments because yeah. obviously this is a big team game. Uh, there are a few presenters in front of the camera and then a whole heap of people doing work behind the camera. And to be honest, their job's harder. Yeah, it is. Trying to make good videos out of Hank and Sai and Manon and myself is not an easy task. No, indeed it wasn't. But um, but yeah, and it was a pleasure to film that day as well. So uh, so we will give you more videos like that if you would like them. Because um, that's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There were um, there were quite a few comments under that video about shades as well, weren't there? Uh, turn, turns out my new sunglasses might be controversial. Um, Carl Downing. I love the fact that Sai has found an alternative use for welder's goggles. So, that thought um, did go through my mind, actually, when mm, I watched that video the other day. I love those glasses, not going to lie. You must do, to wear them. Well, yeah, you? absolutely. Anyway, underneath how to ride 50 kilometres, Istvan uh, Hulvath put my longest, uh, well, sorry, my first longer ride was a 77k loop. After getting home, I was lying on the kitchen floor in agony, thinking I would never go near my bike ever again. The next day, I found myself browsing the map, looking for new routes. And that, for me, sums up cycling in a nutshell. It can often be very hard at the time, can't it? But as soon as you've finished, you're waiting for the next one. Indeed. You're looking yeah. for where it's going to be. All uh, right, we should get on to what's coming up on the channel. So on Wednesday, uh, six ways to increase your top speed. Um, this is definitely something that I need, particularly if I'm thinking about what my top speed might be in 10 years' time. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. On Thursday, it's a big one. We've got GCN Tech Show. We have the Ronde van Vlaanderen previews for both the men's and the women's. We've got an indoor 20-minute high-intensity interval training. And then we've got some... I think you need to read out its name, Dan. Leg bust. Oh, bang, 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 leg buster. Bang, bang, leg buster. Yeah, it's one of Connor's specials. 
the bang bang leg. Oh, it sounds brilliant. Uh, Doesn't I can't, it? I can't wait to watch it from the comfort of my sofa. And also, we've got a very exciting announcement coming on. Yeah, we do. We can't tell you what it is, but make sure you keep your eyes peeled for that video. Absolutely. Right, on Friday, um, we've got some tech on GCN. Uh, some pretty game-changing tech, actually, from Victoria. So uh, make sure you uh, keep your eyes peeled for that one. Then also, we've got Wout Van Aert's Pro Bike over on, uh, on GCN Racing. So... Uh, do you know which one it is? Is it his aero bike? Or is, it's a Cervelo. Um, it's a Cervelo. Right, <laughs> <that's it. laughs> uh, right. and then uh, on Saturday, we've got Can You Destroy DI2? Okay, what would it take to break electronic group sets? Uh, and then on Sunday, we've got Blake versus Hank on cobbled climbs. What would happen if you put a mountain biker up a cobbled climb? Would they beat a roadie? So well, that'd be interesting, out. wouldn't it? Yeah, wouldn't it, Jess? Also on Sunday, it's only the Tour of Flanders, hey. men's and women's, and we have got live current coverage of both races, the men's from start to finish, the women's race, you'll be able to watch the end of that after the men's. So it's going to be a long day, and we've decided to make it even longer by doing a pre-race build-up show with myself and Cy hosting, and then a post-show too. So, um, yeah, we won't be able to have any beers, I don't think. It's too long of a day. We'll be, it would be, we'll be a flat out on the sofa day. by the end of it if yeah. we do that. Maybe um, just at the end. I should mention also so that territory restrictions do apply, so please make sure it is available where you are before you buy a subscription to GCN+. Plus. Indeed. Well, that one might not be available where you are, but chances are there will be one, though, wouldn't there? No, there are a whole host available in all GCN Plus territories. Gazillions, in fact. Right then, I think that might be the end of the GCN show for this week, Dan. shut my laptop lid. Ceremonially. There we go. Thank you very much for watching, as always. Um, as Dan said last week, if you're still here, there's a medal somewhere waiting for you. Amazing how many people comment saying they've got through to the end. I was I quite know. surprised. Well done. Well done. Um, anyway, please give the show a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it.